There's a lot of hemp. And after you've moved a ton of hemp, you then start to realize that you have to mix a ton of hemp <laughs> with water and lime. It's gonna be quite some mixes. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to our renovation project here in Portugal, where it is a very exciting time. As much as the rain is hammering down outside and it's very dark inside, we're about to embark on our first bit of proper hemp lime plastering. We've got our hemp, we've got some quick lime, we've got all the things that we need, I think, and we're gonna be tackling this small room behind me it's very small, it's very dark, it's probably gonna be quite awkward, but we will do our best to show you the experience. And we are setting ourselves a challenge. We're gonna have three days to get that room plastered with its first coat, the scratch coat, so that we can get this video out to you by the weekend. That's the plan, let's see how we do. Well, it turns out a wine barrel is very useful for uh, storing your hemp. So whilst we wait for the first part of the mix to uh, calm down and uh, be ready to mix in the rest of the hemp, we thought we'd talk a little bit about the experiment that we did and the results now that it's dry. So a successful experiment? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I don't know what I expected, but we're very excited to plaster a whole room this week because it really changes the feel of the room. So this is the two-part hemp mix, very fibrous. This is where I tried to float it before we scratched it up. And this is really not got too much texture. You can't really see the hemp too much in it because the lime has floated to the top. 
this part here we didn't do any floating and it's much more fibrous so when we do the second coat we're going to try and float it like this we just might use it as a top coat um, we're going to put a bit of sand into that mix as well i think well we're going to experiment with it we're going to experiment with putting some sand in to see what that finish is like but we also have two barrels of slaked lime out in our carport and i'm going to experiment with using the lime putty with the hemp but yeah it's a really interesting finish some people have commented it's kind of like that wood chip wallpaper that is not the effect we're going for at all and it's it's similar to that but it, it's not anywhere near as it's bad. not as fibrous there was lots of comments about using rolling brushes and rolling pins and we're not going for a smooth flat surface we want all the unevenness because that's where the character is we're going to be leaving quite a few walls exposed so it would look really weird to have some nice beautiful exposed stone walls and then this really super modern finish so we're going for much more of a rustic smooth smooth rounded corners the undulations etc something else that a couple of people commented on is why are we bothering to put this onto the internal walls and the biggest reason is because of the depth of the back boxes for the electrics they're about 45 millimeters or four and a half centimeters um, and if we had to chisel out all those back boxes and where all the cable goes it would just it would take a lot longer to do that than it would to put this on so we're using this basically to cover our electrics um, and since we have to put something on the walls anyway why not do this and later on probably at the end of this plastering marathon uh, I'll do a cost breakdown of the hemp that we bought how much it cost what that means in terms of square meter coverage etc etc um, for those of you who like math not me fin finances yeah <laughs> uh, the other thing is this is dried really fast so it was dry to the touch in about three days um no a bit longer than that i think was it yeah i think i think uh, i think maybe a week completely dry in two weeks yeah lots of people suggested soaking the hemp and the reason that you don't do that is because then the walls take a really really long time to dry and depending on the conditions in the room the hemp then has a possibility of not rotting but it's not ideal you don't want the hemp to get too wet because of the time that it would take to dry out and because we want to be able to go over this in a relatively short period of time you want your hemp to have the least amount of water so it's a balancing act between getting the right amount of water in for the lime the right amount in for the hemp but not too much um, so hopefully our mix this time is a bit better we added more water up front less hemp and that should give both the lime and the hemp the, the right amount of moisture that they need oh yes look at that steaming so we haven't finished this mix but it has finished slaking because all of the vigorous bubbling has died down we still have a bit more hemp and a bit more water to add in but we're going to do that gradually with the mixer uh, so that we can get the right consistency
amazing stuff. Weird stuff. <laughs> I'm going to finish my bucket, so I'm going to oh, wow. get past. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go through this pretty quick. Yeah. Look at my hot, sweaty face. Wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> it's very sweaty and hot in here. Yeah, it's this <laughs> tiny room. It's very and awkward. As usual, it's quite a physical job. It's okay, I need to burn the cavalry. Myself also. <laughs> so while well, I'm finishing this, do you yeah. want to do another mix? Another one? Yeah, so you can empty the blue barrel into the black one. Oh uh, yeah, I can do it. And then, because otherwise it's too hot to work with, right? If yeah, you... I agree. There's a little bit up here that I missed, but it's probably okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think when this is done, we can just kind of look at the wall and then see if there's any patches that need a bit more when yeah. you look at it from the side. Well, this is just the first coat. Yeah. So, how was that? Hot, sweaty work, very messy. I uh, <laughs> look. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and put some long sleeves on. Uh, my gloves are filled with sweat. Lovely. But our first full wall is done. Scratch coat. Uh, two hours ish for almost two mixes on this wall. Um, we had it as our goal just to get this one wall done today and it's not even lunchtime yet so we're going to be cracking on and doing this wall and I'm going to have some long sleeves on. Um, it's very physical but very fast, much faster than I was expecting. Much faster than the dubbing out. Much faster, so much faster. Which is good because we had, I had estimated a week to do this room and it won't take us a week. Well, a week for us is two to three days. Yeah, two to three days for us. That's that's a building week for us, two or three days, because of all the other commitments we have. So that's good. Um, and I think I roughed it out to have the whole ground floor with a scratch coat on in six weeks or something. So we should be able to greatly reduce that. Um, the only problem is we don't have our electrician uh, scheduled in yet so I think we'll be doing the scratch coat and then maybe just channeling out where we need to run our first fix which is probably easier than trying to go over it in the first coat mm, yeah maybe true so yeah really happy really sweaty hot <laughs> <laughs> should we take a break while we wait for the next mix to yes, go down yes I need to clean up and put a shirt, different shirt on okay oh the sweat
Are you admiring your handiwork? <laughs> Just making sure our job was good enough. We're very tired at the end of yesterday. <laughs> I'm still very tired. <laughs> it was a long day. So, two days. Let's see, the first day we did about 9.30 to 3.30. Two walls. The second day, yesterday, we did about 9.30 to 6.30. Two walls, two bigger walls. Um, the room is done. We're exhausted. We're but it very, looks great. Yeah, we're very happy. You walk in and it feels like a room. I particularly like the light well. That looks really nice with the sun coming through. Um, autumn is here. It was eight degrees this morning when we got up. It's 12 degrees now. What temperature was it when we showered in the dark last night? Cold. Outside. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at a little, and at the end of a long building day, everything just feels so much worse. Um, but worth it. So, yeah, we reached our goal in two days, which is very impressive. unheard of. Yeah, like <laughs> it's great, which means now we can have a, a lighter day. Not today, probably tomorrow or Friday. Um, let's see, thoughts. It's exhausting. Oh my god, it's exhausting. So we decided right on the beginning of day one that the best technique was to use our hands. And I think that's because of the, the volume of hemp that we have in this base coat. But it is fabulous. If you get the mix right, it's really fabulous to work with because it just, it just slides onto the walls. It does mean a lot of this and a lot of this. <laughs> And my hands are sore, my arms are sore. Um, but it's a really interesting material to work with. And it's great to work with your hands on your own building. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the choice that we made to use hemp. And uh, I'm looking forward to like the whole house being done. So yeah, the material is really interesting. It kind of feels like plastering with tuna mayonnaise. And that is actually what we decided on as the best consistency for this, like a quite a firm tuna mayonnaise. But we had a lot of problems with the mix, particularly on the second day. If you saw one of our previous videos, we talked a little bit about the difference between the Baptista brand and the MaxiCal brand and how they are and how they're different, but the maxi cow that we had was partially hydrated because it's either old or because of where it was stored in the warehouse that we bought it from. And it meant that it was really tricky yesterday to get a consistent mix because we were having to basically adjust every mix on the fly to add either more water or less water, or it slaked a little bit or not at all, or then the last mix slaked properly. And so because of that process, it, it was giving us a different amount of lime in the end and different amounts of water and needing to add different amounts of hemp. And it was really, really fiddly to, to get right. And so sometimes we were like really having to work hard to get the mix on the wall because it was a bit too dry or a bit too hempy. And then other times it was just way too sloppy. So we had to go back and adjust it again. So anyway, it was a bit of a faff. If you're ever interested in working with this kind of material or putting hemp into the plaster for the insulation benefits or just because of the kind of natural rustic look to it, if you can, get hold of the pre-mixed bags <laughs> because that would save a lot of hassle. It's much more expensive. Much more expensive and we don't have access to it here or as far as we know or as far as we have found. The other thing that will help us in the future is we've ordered a new paddle mixer that is bigger and beefier and more powerful. Unfortunately, that didn't arrive in time for this project, but we have lots more of this to do. So uh, hopefully the mixing process in the future will be a little bit easier because my back and my arms and my shoulders and my hands and even my legs are quite sore today. Anyway, we did say that we would talk a little bit more about the cost of things. So let's do that. Show me the money. <laughs> I have none. I spent it all on him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got two pallets of hemp, uh, 21 bags, bales of hemp per pallet. They came from Spain because that was the most affordable and the company that responded to my emails. And the transport was... The, tr the transport was... So the, well, I did find a Portuguese company. The hemp was going to be more expensive through them and I imagine it's still the same French hemp. 
but their transport costs to get to us, they said, between 300 and 500 euros. The Spanish company quoted 110 per pallet plus VAT. Um, so just hands down, the Spanish company won out. Um, so it cost 990 euros in total with all the VAT and delivery um, included. So that works out at 23 euros per bale and that bale is 200 litres. We use 30 litres in a single mix. This room took two bales of hemp, was it? Not quite two almost, bales. Okay, almost two bales and how many bags of lime? So we used three and a half bags of the Baptista quick lime which slaked properly and doubled in volume. And then we also used two bags, but larger bags, of the Maxical Calviva, which was actually partially hydrated. So it is a bit difficult to work out the, the math based on our actual use in this room, but that's why we're going to give you the, the, the bottom line on a basically on a per square meter basis. <laughs> so based on the math using the quick lime, not the stuff that didn't work properly, uh, it works out to about six euros per square meter of this mix. So this is a very hemp heavy mix. We use this scratch coat to kind of level out the wall. Now it's not level and flat, but it's much more flat than it was. So in some places it's quite thick and in other places it's not. Um, so I would say anywhere from one or two millimeters through to maybe 20 mil. Well, maybe um, even more than that maybe, in some of the holes. Yeah, because there were some, some, some rocks that were really out and some that weren't. Um, so yeah, six euros per square metre and that's taking into account all of the delivery and all of the VAT across all of the products that we used as a rough calculation. Um, I can't tell you the cost of this room, but there's many square metres in here. Um, but yeah, we've only used two bales of our hemp out of our 42, which is, this is just one room. Uh, we have many, many, many days of plastering to go. And I think it's worth saying, because we actually said this to ourselves uh, at the end of yesterday, we have massive respect for anyone who does this for a living, <laughs> because it's really hard and it's very physical. There's a lot of skill involved. Of course, we don't have that skill yet, but we may acquire it by the end of this project. But being able to estimate materials effectively, which is something we're usually terrible at, being able to uh, work out how long it's going to take to do a particular wall. I mean, it's nice in this case that we didn't run out of material and we did it in less time than we originally thought. But we still got all the estimates completely wrong. So anyone who does this for a living, massive respect to you. Of course, we enjoy doing this kind of stuff, even though it is really hard work. Um, and that's why we are choosing to uh, plow ahead with uh, doing the rest of the place ourselves. But I think that is it for now and for this project in this room. We will show you more of the plastering in the future because there's a lot more of it to do and otherwise we would run out of ideas for videos. But thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.